I was a computer savant child. So what is it that I do? I am anime. The short script in Python, for some reason. Who are you to get rid of that bloody grinder? I'm so glad you asked. Hi everyone, I'm Alex. I'm a software engineer living in Japan, so this is not clickbait. A couple weeks ago, I asked you to ask me questions. And today, with the help of my second favorite hot beverage here, uh, hopefully, I'll be answering all of them. What brought you to Japan? I'm living here with my lovely wife, and if you want to learn how I ended up here, please watch the video that I linked somewhere over here, or over here, I'm not really sure. So I don't mean to brag, but I was a computer savant child, and I first hacked into the Pentagon's um, network when I was seven, I believe, or seven and a half. So none of that stuff. Actually, I was quite a regular child. I became a little bit obsessed with computers when I was 13, but I wasn't really that good at math. So what kept me interested is uh, that I wasn't really interested in anything else. I graduated from a local university in a small town in Russia. That's where I grew up. And my major was related to computer science, but the curriculum was about 15 years behind the industry when I entered. And needless to say, it was at the exact same place when I graduated. So after that, I went on to work for several different companies and I sort of learned on, on the job. I am anime. Jokes aside, I don't watch it nearly as much as I used to uh, about 15 years ago, but I do watch it occasionally. Okay, so my job title is staff engineer and I work for a relatively large startup in the fintech area. 90% of the code I've written here was written in Kotlin. That's the main language we use on the back end. I do occasionally write code in other languages. A good example of that is the little changes that I do in the front end. Uh, that's React slash TypeScript based, um, but the backend is where I'm most comfortable. So what is it that I do? Actually, only about 30 or 40% of my time is spent writing code. Most of the time I spend worrying about the uh, solution architecture of the area I'm responsible for, uh, talking to other team members, brainstorming solutions together and consulting. I was asked for the specifics by someone who is a student. So if it helps, here's a list of stuff that I have to deal with on a daily basis. I'm not sure if it helps though, because by the time you graduate, this list likely will have changed. If I may suggest, you should focus on the fundamentals. Uh, understanding the principles behind your database or framework or language. If you know the basics really well, instead of going through the entire manual for your given piece of technology, uh, you might just end up Googling, how do I do X in Y? That's much easier. What do you enjoy about your job? A few days ago, I tried to film this exact video, but at that time I was a bit under the weather. And um, what I wanted to do is to write a short script in Python for some reason that would fetch all my YouTube comments from my channel and then group them by similarity. The problem with that task is the first part of it is very straightforward. The second part is much more complicated. It requires something like natural language processing and machine learning, which I have virtually no experience with. So after two hours of trying, I had a script that would download comments, save them, and crash trying to run them through machine learning. I gave up because I was getting feverish and I urgently needed to take a nap. And that's exactly what I like about my job. In just a few hours with next to none prior experience, I managed to Google and find solutions for all the problems that I was facing, including the more complicated ones and even a few solutions already written. It's like if you were an architect and you for some reason decided to build a new house. Uh, you would just go in the bush and come across a pile of timber, a team of builders ready to go, and all the tools necessary needed to build a new house. There are obviously external attributes to the job as well, like the ability to go literally anywhere in the world and find a job there, or the fact that it pays well, but I don't think that's what you're asking about. Um... Okay, some um, good points here. I have received quite a few questions about my desk setup. Um, speakers, monitor, that little timer uh, a lot of people like. So I will be making a video about my desk setup. Uh, it will likely be 
the next next video so stay tuned i assume that you mean get a software engineer job at a company so as you probably know the situation has changed quite a bit in the last 20 years since i uh, graduated high school yes i'm that old you don't need a fancy degree in computer science or applied math with a few exceptions uh, i would probably first spend some time to get at least the bare minimum level of knowledge that will allow myself to get a foot in the door and then i would try and get an internship in uh, some kind of a company that does something that's uh, remotely interesting to me one tip i can give you if you can get into an early stage tech startup that will actually help you a lot because it will give you exposure to all different aspects of software engineering. I'm so glad you asked. When I lived in Melbourne, I was mostly drinking espresso-based drinks. Uh, that includes your cappuccinos and flat whites. And I even attempted to learn latte art. In Japan, the most common type of coffee is pour over with companies like um, Hario here, making these little funnels, uh, paper filters, and even kettles that simplify the process. All right, finally, Japan-related questions. As you probably know, despite living in Japan, I actually work for an international company and my team is primarily based out of Melbourne, Australia. So I don't really know what it's like working for a purely Japanese company. From my very superficial research, it doesn't seem to be that much different. I hope someday I can collab with someone actually working as a software engineer uh, in Japan for a Japanese company. If it's you, hit me up. If one day I'm out of the job and I have to find a job somewhere, uh, be it a Japanese company or an international company that allows me to work here, what would I do? Uh, I would actually first go to uh, something like indeed.com and compile a list of companies that are remotely interesting to me and then go through all of them and research the crap out of them on glassdoor.com. Uh, uh, that's a website that allows you to see into the uh, behind the scenes of a company. Uh, so you can check stuff like how much are people paid on average? What do employees say about the company? What kind of questions they ask at interviews and so on. For Japan-based companies, there's a great website that I've recently come across, Tokyo Dev, I believe. I'll drop a link in the description. It has a list of Japan-based companies and various useful info, like uh, whether they sponsor visas or uh, whether they allow to work remotely, etc. It might be a better option reaching out to a company based out of, say, uh, the US that allows remote work because generally speaking, they pay better. The job might be more interesting uh, and, you know, working culture might be a better fit for you. However, if you're on a work visa that is tied to your employer or you don't want to bother sorting out your taxes by yourself, then a Japan-based company might be your only option. So now I'm not going to speculate how interviews in Japan-based companies compare to, say, uh, Australia or the US based companies because honestly I don't know but what I've learned during my years of uh, being a software engineer is that in every country they tend to put their own twist on technical interviews uh, in some countries they go deeper on um, technical questions and they prioritize your hard skills so to speak as opposed to soft skills in other countries they do the exact op opposite and they give you the uh, benefit of the doubt if you uh, happen to fail some of the technical questions from my very superficial research on Glassdoor, japan is in the former category but again i don't have enough information i'm not an expert in this area so if you know more please drop a comment uh, it's from my wife uh, did I forget to wash dishes? You must have heard that Melbourne at some point was named the world's most livable city for seven consecutive years. Great architecture, great work-life balance, great food, uh, many things great, except maybe um, weather that just came straight from hell. Hello, this is future me here. I'm editing the footage and I've just realized that a couple of pieces are missing. 
I'm not sure whether I've, uh, I haven't recorded them at all or I just somehow deleted them in the process because uh, I was uh, a bit feverish at the time. So I was comparing Melbourne and Tokyo and my initial impression is that Tokyo is a much more dynamic city where everyone is always on the rush somewhere. Whereas Melbourne is, um, I think a good work-life balance is how I would characterize it. Because you often see people hanging out in like local cafes or uh, going out and about just enjoying their lives. Whereas in, in Tokyo, it feels like everyone is always working. But bear in mind, I've only been here for half a year and I actually live in a different prefecture, albeit uh, just across the river from Tokyo. So uh, let me simmer here for a little bit longer. Um, maybe another half a year or a year or so and observe my reaction. I haven't been in Japan for that long, but I have been learning about Japan and other Asian cultures for that matter uh, for about a decade now. So uh, I haven't had much of a, you know, culture shock. This one thing has been kind of a reoccurring thing for me. Most of the processes in Japan are very well greased compared to uh, literally any other place I've been to. That applies to everything from renting an apartment to applying for a credit card. And the thing is, if you satisfy all the criteria for the process, it will work like a charm. But the flip side of that is if one thing doesn't match, the process generally falls apart completely. It took me about a month to open a bank account despite the fact that my wife, a native Japanese speaker, was with me at all times and she was handling the process. And you won't believe what the reason was. The reason was that at the time I believed that my company didn't have a landline. So I couldn't provide them with a landline phone number and that completely broke the process. The bank employee handling my uh, account application ended up talking to the manager who ended up talking to their manager and the process went on and on and on and on. They literally didn't know what to do with me. We had to jump through lots of hoops and finally a month later uh, the application was approved. Now this is not to criticize Japan. Every culture has more than a few facets and this is just one of them. The grinder. You can't imagine how many comments I have received telling me to get rid of that bloody grinder. Look, it's not that I haven't tried. Japanese, am I working towards N2, N1? So for those of you who don't know, the standard way of measuring Japanese proficiency is the so-called uh, JLPT or Japanese Language Proficiency Test. Nihongo no ryoku shiken, uh, it's called in Japanese. So N2 and N1 are the more advanced levels, uh, N1 being basically borderline native speaker. I'm not nearly as good uh, in Japanese. I would probably estimate my level to be somewhere in between N4 and N3 on a good day. I absolutely want to achieve that kind of level of proficiency because I'm planning to live here long term. Uh, at least that's what the, the current plans are. And in my opinion, if you want to live somewhere and if you want to integrate with the uh, society, in that place uh, is absolutely crucial that you learn the language well. However, I don't really know how to manage my time well and it's really, really difficult for me to consistently keep investing my time into learning Japanese. So I'll see how I go and I'll keep you posted. Hi, it's me again. This is the last time I promise. I've been here for a little bit over half a year now and I haven't had a single situation apart from going to like a, a bank or some kind of uh, government office where my basic level of Japanese uh, weren't enough. Tell you what, if you speak absolutely zero Japanese, I would argue that you will feel relatively comfortable in Tokyo 
and other major cities, just because there would be an English version of every sign or every menu at every restaurant. However, if you want to make friends with Japanese people, it's a totally different story. I myself am in the process of starting a YouTube channel in Japan, and I was wondering when do you find time to plan, shoot, and edit videos? I don't, I totally share your pain. As I said, I'm not very good at managing my own time, but the truth is, if you like it, you will have to piece together small scraps of time here and there to do it. Good luck. A fair few questions about my setup. Um, actually, let me show you. So I have this camera right here on a tripod. This is my desk with the protein bar half finished. And that's a light that I'm bouncing off a wall here that serves as my key light. And over there is my hair light. And audio is being recorded by this little guy right here. It's a lav mic. You found the sore spot. Uh, it's not the first time I find myself in this situation. And what helps me personally is that I am likely the most introverted person you will ever meet. So I'm very comfortable being inside my own head most of the time. I do recognize it as a problem and I'm proactively trying to solve it by just going out more, uh, going to various meetups and meeting new people. Do you now have more questions than before? Have I left your question unanswered? Drop a comment and let me know. From now on, I will try and post a new video every fortnight. So see you then.